Welcome back, everyone, to the Merdeka Award Roundtable. I'm here with Dr. Sri Idris Jala of Pamandu, Oliver Tonby of McKinsey, and Dr. Dr. Kenneth Young, who is a previous recipient of the Merdeka Award. We'll pick up our discussion where we left off just now. I think the point that you made is, is, is really quite the crux of a lot of successes. You have to drill down, you have to narrow, and you have to know yeah. uh, where you have the best chances of success. How did you go? How does the government go about picking? Yeah. Well, well, let me rewind the clock. The government will sit down and ask the question. There are very few countries in the world that have made it to a high income economy. And the question is, what are the criteria that determines the pathway to get there? We found two, not three, but two. The first one is to be able to focus on the sectors that will help you to get there. And we yeah. call those our 12 national key economic areas. Yeah. The second one is about competitiveness. So if you are focused and you're not competitive, that's not going to make, we will not get there anyhow. So we have identified 51 strategic reform initiatives, 51 of them, that if we implemented all those 51 strategic reform initiatives, then we create the competitiveness, mm. the conditions for competitiveness to flourish. And I'll give you one example. Putting in place competition law that will not allow bid rigging, price fixing, and all of this, that's just one example, liberalization. When we liberalize certain sectors, it brings in the competition so that people cannot just be complacent. They have to be competitive. And so the notion about liberalizing the 70 subsectors is just one of the, seven, uh, the 51 strategic reform industry. Let me return to the point. We are very clear in our ETP, Economic Transformation Program, yes. that we have to focus on the 12 NKEAs. Mm. Yeah. It's 12 a lot? It's not a lot. We have, if you like, my split them, there are about 40 altogether. <laughs> so 12 what is, what is all over your experience in, yeah. in other countries in the region who perhaps are at the same stage of uh, economic development as we are, which is we're, we're somewhat mm. efficiency driven at the yeah. moment. We've gone, migrated past the screwdriver economy thing mm. and we're moving towards you know, uh, uh, an innovation, knowledge-based, services driven yeah. economy. Do you have um, experiences or examples of countries you think have managed that transition well and have focused on the right thing? There are a few that you can look to around the world. Now, it's always dangerous to compare countries because the contexts are so different. If you don't mind, just let me, let me talk a little bit about, I'm, I'm from Norway, just to talk a little bit about you know, the, some of the Norwegian learnings, I think. This idea of focusing on a, on a sector, let me pick fish farming. Norway is one of Norway's largest industries. It's gotten to the point now where one kilo of fish feed produces 1.1 kilos of fish. That's quite remarkable. How do you get there? You get there through innovation, through the whole ecosystem, so to speak. Innovation in the R&D of fish feed, innovation in equipment providers, innovation in the fish farm operators themselves, and even the legislation around it, for example, on antibiotics. So I think one of the learnings is around focus on sectors and drive innovation through that whole sector. I think this is one of the learnings yeah. I think you could apply to some of the sectors. You know, yeah. I think what you're saying there is quite interesting, which brings me to a follow-up point that can maybe you can address. I think because you are an architect yes, and you look at things in a very critical way. So once you have gotten to the point where you say, OK, I've got 1.1 kilo of fish feed, and with that I can feed one kilo of fish, uh, there has to be a certain point where you, you look at all these areas of focus, but you must also oh, yeah. be quite critical of your efforts. And by whose standards? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where absolutely. Does, where, absolutely. you know, you can say, oh, I've done really, really yeah. quite well, yeah, yeah. but you may That's not brilliant. really have. You have yeah. to set the standards. Can, can I jo really, join, jump really, in uh, exactly really the, hard, yeah. the, the Oliver's point? We took the same idea and looked at it in oil palm. Uh, oil palm is a big sector. Now, we asked the question, how do we increase the oil extraction rate? Mm. Then we have more than 100 over mills, refineries, oil palm mills across the country. So we started ranking them. Yeah. Which one is number one? Which yeah. one is the last? Yeah. Right. And we, when we looked at it, it was quite obvious that the top 10 were the ones who followed the best practice in standards that you raised. Right. Yeah. Where are those standards? We have published the standard. Yeah. by MPOB, the Malaysian Palm Oil Board. It's all clear. 
So what we then did was we took 100, we call them Tunas officers, we installed them at every mill right. across the country and we've said to them, this is the standard, mm -hmm. will you please apply the standard in your mill? And so in the last year, just by putting that standard, we were able to increase the oil extraction rate from the same mill yes. by a few percentage points. And that is actually increasing so money. our yes. money by a huge right. sum, yeah. Yeah. billions. Yeah. Right. But, but it seems, you know, that Ashwin, you can possibly do that where your processes are so well defined yeah. in an industry like Ken's, where you're talking about architecture. Sure. Uh, yes. the, the, there's a creative aspect to it. Right. There's an aesthetic aspect to it. It's extremely right. subjective. Some of these ideas of standards, yes. you know, do you think we're critical enough of our own work or we're just very too quick to rest on our laurels in this in, in a sector where the results are not as easily uh, accounted for? I think one of the biggest problems in Malaysia is confidence because um, there's an enormous amount of talent around. Yeah. But talent doesn't surface because of lack of confidence. Mm. So, you know, the idea of Malaysia, Malaysia Bole, I think, is very important because, you know, the belief that you can be good as anybody else, you know, uh, anywhere in the world, I think that's extremely really important. And so, one of the things we have to do to make ourselves first world class is to build the confidence in the local people. You know, and if you keep giving projects to foreign architects, you never build this confidence. And so, you know, uh, it's extremely important that um, not only we should build confidence at the professional level, but at the school level. For instance, in my office, I employ a lot of foreign architects, American architects, you know, Scandinavian architects, Japanese architects, and I put them next to a Malaysian architect. And then when they put them next to each other, Melissa and architect will say, oh, that's something he can do that I can't do. You can learn from him. Then also he says that that's something he can't do that I can do. So the confidence goes up. Once the confidence goes up, the talent surfaces. Yeah. It, it's like a cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Once you have that, yes. then people look at exactly. what you're doing, what you're yeah. achieving, and they say, oh, you know, I think I want to be in Malaysia. Yeah. And, and this oh, confidence. Sorry. One of the best, fastest way to build this confidence is exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Is to let our people go overseas and see what it's like. Yeah. So when I tell people, it says we've got to do this of an international standard. Thank you. They have to go and see what it's like. Yes, exactly. So Absolutely. then they can judge for themselves and say, look, if, you know, this is what international standard. But most important, not just imitate or follow international standard, there must be ambition to be better than what other people are doing. And once you have that ambition and confidence, the country will fly. Okay, we hold that thought. Yeah. We're going to go to another break. Yes. And when we come back, these are one of the things that I want to talk about is mm. how we grow our talent, how we develop our human capital. We'll be right back with the Merdeka Award Roundtable. <laughs>